Welcome again to our Wednesday night service. No, it's always a blessing to be always together, and I'm so glad to be here in tonight. Amen. So before we start our song service, I just want to open up and pray. So let's bow our heads and pray. Thank you, Jesus, once again for this night that you've given to us. Thank you for the breath of life, Jesus, that you've given to us this morning, great God. Thank you, Jesus, for your protection, great God, Lord, your guidance, Jesus. Thank you, great God, Lord, for your presence always with us, God, wherever we go, Jesus. And I pray, great God, that as we come again together, Jesus, to praise and worship your name, Jesus, and to hear your words, God, that it be, oh, great Jesus, um, always in us, oh, Jesus, great God, Lord. I pray, God, that you open up our eyes, our hearts, oh, great Jesus, tonight, great God, and help us to lay aside everything, oh, Jesus, at your feet tonight. So, Lord, we give you all the praise and the glory in your mighty name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's praise God.
we proceed to our worship service, I think we've got the offerings as well. So I call on the ushers and I also call on those at home as well. We've got the Titan offerings on the bank account that you can transfer your account, that you can transfer your offerings electronically as well. So that's another option for us. Thank you, Jesus, for today, Lord God. Thank you for giving us a new day, Lord God, and a new life, Lord Jesus. Lord God, thank you for giving us this time to worship you, Lord God, in our tithes and offerings, Lord God. And I pray that it be multiplied to the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. song that we're gonna be singing tonight it's called breakthrough i don't know but we do need a breakthrough every day amen now sometimes we're so caught up with the routine and the busyness of life that sometimes we forget what it is the purpose that we have in this in this life that we've got you know i remember reading something in the bible it says that we are here for a purpose and that, you know, we're not here for the world, but we're just here just to go through, go through whatever that, I don't know how to say it, but, um, sorry. It's just that sometimes we get in the motion and we just tend to forget sometimes what it is that we need to do in this world, especially in this time right now. For me personally, work has been draining me so much and sometimes my focus is not on God and, you know, it really drains you out. So as we sing this song, I sing this for myself and I hope that at home and everyone in here, you sing this for yourself as well and that God touch you tonight. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
there is more that I get to discover. So many things I want to uncover. I've been scratching surface.
Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. stay the same I want a different life serving you hallelujah hallelujah I'm tired of just being a mediocre living on things that I always have I need more of you Lord Jesus and there's more because your words have promised there's more of you Lord Jesus thank you Lord thank you musicians for praising and worshiping God thank you Lord hallelujah thank you in their homes in their rooms in their lounge Wherever you are situated, I know that the song that we have sung a while ago had touched your heart. We need the breakthrough. We need to go deeper. Because there's more of God that we have experienced in the past. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord had advances the time because he said the time will be shortened. He's going to show his glory. He's going to show his grace and mercy and power to those that are willing to give in, to sacrifice, to give their life to the Lord. He will show his power. No doubt about it. That's his word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He's going to show his power to save. He's going to show his power to heal. He's going to show his power to, to revive a broken family, restore marriages, financial blessings, and all these things that we are dreaming of the Lord, from the Lord. He's going to do it in the last days. Amen. But we just have to go deeper. And that would be our lesson for tonight. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 47, verses 1 to 5. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 47, verse 1 to 5. Be shown on the screen. And if you have your Bibles with you, your electronic devices, which has Bibles in it, open it up on your Bible apps. Do not open it up on your Facebook, but open up the Bible up in Jesus' name. Ezekiel 47, 1 to 5. Afterward, he brought me again unto the door of the house. That word again, in other words, he has been there before. So he brought me again, back again. And behold, now he saw things that astounded Ezekiel. Waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward to the forefront of the house stood toward the east. And the waters came down from under from the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Then brought me he out of the way of the gate northward. Lead me about the way without Unto the other gate, by the way that looketh eastward, and behold, there run out waters on the right side. Waters are everywhere. And when the man, supposed to be an angel, a guide, a messenger, when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits. He brought me through the waters, the waters. Were to the ankles. Hallelujah. 
Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters. The waters were to the knees. They did not lift their feet. He go through the waters. It was down to the knees from the ankles. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through. The waters were to the loins. And verse 5, afterward, he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass over. For the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. We have been hearing this vision of Ezekiel for so many times. We have been hearing so many messages and preach words regarding these waters as issued from the house. And tonight I will be giving to you a little bit of uh, insights as we go serve the Lord and as we go deeper in serving Him. We'll go through this lesson once, once again one more time. Hallelujah. But before that, we'll, we'll, we'll pray. We'll bow our heads. Lord Jesus, thank you for your words. Your words are ever settled in heaven. They are there, Lord God, always. And they have done because you said your will be done as it is in heaven. Lord, we thank you that souls who are here tonight to listen to your words. Lord, I pray that you will penetrate their hearts. Let them have a breakthrough, Lord God. That they will appreciate you so much. They will have praise in their hearts to give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. So, I uh, think uh, you have already been he hearing and reading the news about uh, easing of restrictions that uh, will be able to have the people here in the church. Um, most of us will come on Sunday, uh, but we will still uh, maintain social distancing. So uh, measure the church, it's uh, almost 300 square meters and uh, we're able to accommodate uh, about 80 people that we have. So praise the Lord. So on Sunday, we could all be here. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So Queenslanders had been cooperating very well. And so we're able to open up our borders and ease the restriction. But we will still maintain the health and safety protocol, social distancing, if you want to wear a mask, you can wear a mask. You know. um, we will still uh, uh, have your name and address and phone number recorded. And um, we will uh, measure your temperature. And if you're sick, just don't come to church. Just stay at home, do the live streaming, and you're still going to be blessed. Amen. So... We'll see you on Sunday, all of you. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Let's go to our lesson tonight. Let's go deeper with God. Um, we have so many books in the Bible, which is quite hard to digest or understand. If you don't have the background, if you don't have the uh, Bible school uh, knowledge. There are some scriptures, there are some books that are difficult to learn and to read and to understand, and Ezekiel is one of them. And uh, some people uh, just don't want to read this kind of books because it's hard to understand. It's like the book of Revelations. People say, oh, I'm, I'm scared of the book of Revelations. Not only that they are scared of what is coming, but they don't understand most of what is written in the book of Revelations. And, and Ezekiel is one of these books. And uh, if we are going to continue reading and, and seek the face of God and, and the mind of God and 
asking God to open our understanding. I know that uh, there are great truths that will be able to be revealed to us and even challenge us and, and, and at the end will change us. Amen. Uh, we're going to talk about one of the books, which is now Ezekiel, and it has a supernatural vision, and we have read about the river. And uh, I know that uh, as we go along, you will, as you follow me, there, there will be uh, insights that we could go deeper with God. So, Ezekiel was led by, by this man, a guide, supposed to be an angel, to the door. He was led to the door. You see, God will not take us and show us things that he wants to see, that, we uns that he wants us to see, and he wants us to have the will to cooperate. Amen. God can and will lead people to a new heights of experience, to the depth of the knowledge of God, if we are just willing to go deeper. If there is a willingness that we want to experience God in such a splendor revelation. If we let him. If we don't let him, if we are a little bit reluctant and, um, you know, I want to do some work at home. I want to do this. And, you know, God is trying to reveal things to you. Yes, you read the Bible and you, know, you stop it and then you go somewhere else. I mean, God will not overwhelm or override our will. So Ezekiel was brought to the door. And he said, okay. He was not compelled to go, but he was brought. In other words, it's a polite gesture that Ezekiel, come with me. So Ezekiel has to cooperate. And the question would be, are we cooperating with what God wants us to see? Are we cooperating with what God wants us to do? God says, I have plans for you and me. He has plans for us and want to show us things. But sometimes, as I've said before, we've been busy with our ways. And sometimes that you have ever had with the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But we just have to go in, cooperate with God that prompted us. As he opened the door. Amen. Hallelujah. So you see from the beginning of the church in the day of Pentecost. I could only say in my own understanding that that was just a trickle. Of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost during the time. Deeper and deeper. In the apostolic revival, it goes beyond 3,000 that has received the Holy Ghost because in the next verses, 5,000 were added some more and some more and more. Deeper and deeper, the revival through the book of Acts. Until we reach today, we have heard and seen the Ethiopian revival wherein there are more than 10,000, 20,000 people received the Holy Ghost in one time. And not only that in one time, there are many times in the revival that they have experienced the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The countless thousands all over the world that are receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, they have seen miracles, signs and wonders, dead race, the dead race to life, and so many things that we have heard, have read in the book, and have spoken to us by the ones that has experience. Finding deliverance, so on and so forth. So many things had been done, and I could say from trickle. Here a little, and there a little. Line upon line, precept upon precept. Hallelujah. 
That's how God is going to give us this deliverance in our time as we go deeper with God. Acts 13 verse 41, Behold you despisers and wonder and perish. For I work a work in your days, a work which you shall in no wise believe. The man declare it unto you. Hallelujah. So here, the writer of the book of Acts is saying that you will wonder. You, you despisers, you, you, you that mock the work of God, you will not even believe the things that will happen. Even if I tell you that these things will happen, you won't believe. You despise the truth. You know? In Revelation 22, verse 1, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. The river came from God. It came directly from the throne of God and flowed out into the world. The river flowed to the east. A new day starts in the east. Ezekiel traveled toward the sun to experience the river. You have to go to the east. The sun rises from the east. So he has to go to the sun. And new directions comes from the east. We must travel as Ezekiel did. He didn't lift up his feet. He go through the water. As we will also go through these times of revival, we must travel. We cannot stay stagnant and complacent. We've got to move. Amen. We've got to move. There should be a change in our way of prayers, in our fasting, in our worship, and the way we read the word. If you have read the word only one verse in one day, make it double. If you have prayed only for 10 minutes, make it 20 minutes. There has to be a move. It has to be a traveling. So we must travel toward the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to experience the river and the power that goes with the river. The truth. It just, you know, Ezekiel standing there and had wet feet. Experiencing only a trickle of God's moving and God's blessings and God's glory, so to speak. So his ankles are wet. But he keeps on moving. And some, you know, in our days, they're satisfied with just getting their feet wet. Oh, okay. I wet my feet. That's enough. You know? they, they come when they want to. But there's no commitment. They don't really participate in helping the church or other people.
everything is with God. So in verse 8, he leaping up, stood and walked, entered with them into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. This is where Ezekiel made the decision that he was not turning back. He's not going to stop now. So you see, some people come to the place of the uncles in their service towards God and linger for a while. I love just to eat my uncles. You know, when you, you, you eat some ice cream, you just love to wet your lips. Mm, it's good. Why don't you bite and eat the ice cream? That's why when I eat ice cream, I don't just lick. I bite. Like to bite ice cream and... So you see, you know, some people just like that, just lick them. Uh, we're not kids anymore, we're adults. <laughs> I mean, the kids can uh, stop licking, uh, they, they start licking, you know. Just like they, they, they love the ankle dip experience with God. Then they start drifting back toward the trickle and, and slowly they're out of the church again. Hallelujah. They never came to a place of commitment, so they never continued on their walk with God. They experienced the Uncle Deep experience. Oh, well, I received the Holy Ghost. I, I spoke in other tongues. I was baptized in Jesus' name. Well, good, you know. I'm, I'm good. I have my job and, you know, just the Uncle Deep experience with God. Hallelujah. They might come to church, but they don't commit their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. Their commitment is based on convenience. Uh, you know, while I'm all right, while I have my car, while I have my, my, my food and the, uh, the, um, uh, the storehouse is full in, in my house, then I'll serve the Lord, you know. And, uh, you know, uh, well, if I don't have to sacrifice my time, my money, and my, uh, well, I can give my tithes and offerings. You know, you know, I have observed that in this calamity and pandemic time, some have ceased to give their tithes and offerings. They eased up in giving too. And God just put us in a situation that we don't have, I don't have work. My wife doesn't work. I have two kids, small kids, and I don't have money. I don't have fare to go to the jeepney and go to church. And uh, what can we do? We'll just sit down in the house and relax and say, no, we have to walk. Let's walk. Even if it's just uncle deep experience that we have with God, let's continue walking. Let's continue walking. We walk to church. We walk to church, and then after the service, we walk home. We did this several times. Even when the church finished at 10 o'clock at night, there's no more jeepney, there's no more transportation. And besides, we have no money. We just hail those cane trucks, the big trucks. And praise the Lord. These drivers of the big trucks just stop. And we, we ride a truck and then we, we go. We have to go home. I mean, we, hallelujah. You see, people will come to church as long as they don't have the sacrifice. They come to church and as long as I don't have my friends having barbecue in the park, I'll come to church. As long as there's no soccer match, I'll come to church, you know. As long as, you know, uh, there's no lion in the way, I'll come to church. I mean, they might even try to find excuses. A lot of excuses. Just Uncle Deep experience. Uncle Deep experience. But Ezekiel kept on walking. Another half a mile with the angel, it was then that the waters got to the knees. To continue this journey, the rivers got to reach your knees. The experience, the things of God has to reach your knees. 
Your prayer life is limited only by your time in church. You could only praise God and worship God when you're in the church, but somewhere else? No. There's got to be something in your day and says that says, I need the presence of God. My spirit is not satisfied unless I can spend time with my Lord and Savior. What are the knees will cause you to feel the current pulling you along? There you will experience the force of the current of the water. The current is easy to ignore in the puddle. Just when it hits, wanting to push you in the direction that the river is flowing. You will see and experience and, and you will acknowledge the presence and the power of God trying to push you. But then, not only on the Nedip that he kept on walking, Ezekiel did another mile with the angel. It was then that the waters got to his loins, to his hips. It was then that the waters were so, you know, boisterous and forceful. To continue in this journey, the river has got to reach your loins and your hips. To continue serving God, to continue to commit yourself to God, your experience is not to be only on the ankle or on the knees, but it has to be on the hip, on your loins. At your hip is where you find your strength. When the boxer boxy get his strength from this part, you know, at your hip. It's where you will find your wallet and your purse. <laughs> Hallelujah. Near your hip is where you will find the womb of a woman. The river has got to reach your checkbook in regular tides and all of the river is now difficult to overcome. Amen. You are more pulled along the walking, and you cannot be pulled now, but just walking on your own. You have to really cooperate. This is where God and even His Spirit can lead you and me to much deeper things of God as you will continue serving God. So Ezekiel, faith to faith, glory to glory. Hallelujah. Let the river that you're in wash over your whole being and new experience from God when you go deeper with God. So the question tonight is, where are you today with God? Are you just wet on your feet, not willing to commit just a hit and miss thing with God? Or are you in the water up to the ankles? You know, you say to yourself, I'm here but not really a part. Uh, and notice that more of your body is out of the water than in the water. Then you have to the knees experience deepening your prayer life, spending time with this word, learning about the Lord Jesus Christ on your knees. Praying, worshiping. And reading the word. And it goes to the water. To your hips. I can give. To the kingdom. Of God. Remember. Where your treasure is. There your heart will be also. You don't have to worry about giving. Because you're now on the hip. The loins. Of your experience with God. You could say to yourself, I can win a soul for God. There's the womb. I can win a soul and I witness to my friends. I can win a soul when I witness to my, my distant relatives and my mom and my brothers and sisters. Now, a river that cannot be passed over. An experience that cannot be ignored. You cannot just hit and miss the experience that you have with God. 
when God let and allow you to pass through some trials and tests and tribulations and some problems, you say to yourself, Lord, I've experienced something from you. And I could not forget. I have to continue. I have to swim. I have to be with your power, Lord. God, you lead me. I will allow your current, not the current of this world, not the current of the devil and the current of my flesh to push me around. Not myself, but my faith in you, Lord Jesus, is the one that I'm going to adhere on. Amen. So you see that in the river that could not be crossed over, you are under the water. You will be just breathing and but your whole body submerged to the water. Lord, every day, wash me clean. Lord, wash my mind, wash my heart, wash my soul, my spirit, wash my mouth, wash my ways, what I have done, what I have talked. Lord, keep me clean every day. Hallelujah. That's the water that could not be crossed over. Lord, anoint my mind. Anoint my life. You see, as we are closing, there is a discussion between the Sadducees and the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ Discussing a difficult subject matter, the resurrection of the dead. Is it possible that the dead will be resurrected? Well, if it's possible, then if a man is married to this woman and the woman died or the man died and then he married again with another brother and he died. And if he has seven brothers married, who's going to be here? Her husband when they go to heaven that's the kind of question they are trying to ask the Lord Jesus Christ you know in Mark chapter 12 verse 28 to 29 I didn't I think I didn't put this on the uh, uh, with brother Josh and one of the scribes came and having heard the, them reasoning together and piercing that and re perceiving that they had answered them well asked him which is the first commandment of all them she goes to a deeper question again. Because Jesus answered them that, you know, uh, you know, God is not with the dead. God is with the living. If you're dead, God is, cannot do anything to you. But if you're living, there's still some hope for you. So now they go to another question about what's the greatest commandment. And Jesus answered the first of all, the commandment is, Hear Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord and God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. With all the, the first commandment is, With all. In the book of Revelation 3 19, as many as I love. He's talking about the agape love. The Holy Ghost, Spirit of God, dwells in you. As many as I love. I just put them on the back. It's all right, brother. It's all right, sister. Is that right? Have you read the book of Revelation 3.19? Show in the, in the overhead. Because as many as I love, I rebuke. I don't know what's the meaning of rebuke in your Understanding and chasten. I don't know what's the meaning of chasten in your vocabulary, but that's how God loves us. Therefore, be zealous, be committed, be ah, hallelujah. And if you have sinned against God, repent because He's going to rebuke you. And sustains you. Romans eleven twenty two. Behold, therefore, the goodness and the severity of God. So you see, you are not looking just love, love. You know, misconception about love of God. Severity of God on them which spell severity. 
So you're already with God, but because you're stubborn and stiff-necked, you fail severity of God, rebuke and chasten. But towards thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be. So think about the love of God. Because he wants to love you with everything he's got. But we've got to offer him a sacrifice of praise. A living sacrifice deeper unto God. He wants us to go deeper and deeper with him. But he wants us to give our lives to him total. I want to be lost in the river of God. Amen. Shall we stand tonight as the musicians will come. I want the river, the presence, and the experience with God to flow in my life, in my heart, in my mind, in my soul, in my whole being. Hallelujah. That's what we want serving God as the end times will come. Amen. God wants us to go deeper. We have to go deeper. If he suggested to us to go, then we need to cooperate with God. Amen. Thank you, Lord.